Should we do something a bit different and go to um, Love and Hate Crime? I think this is made by the same people who did the Life and Death Row. I don't know if you saw any yes, of, that any was of very... those when they were on. Yeah. yeah. Um, going back to um, America, um, it's a story. I think this happened in 2015. I've got a feeling. Yeah. Yep. Um, I remember that. The um, the the sort of focus is this guy Josh um, Vallum, who is um, in his late 20s. He uh, I think it's all in Mississippi. Yes. Um, and um, he's um, been uh, found guilty of murdering his. Um, girlfriend who at the time uh, was 17 and the yeah. way the story told which is very is very good is it sort of just opens it up and opens it up so initially yeah you're just it thinking, didn't tell you everything at the beginning it kind of yeah i like that i like that as a story yeah story. it's sort of so you've got the fact that oh it's, it's this you know she, he's murdered his girlfriend and and you hear from like friends of hers who say oh yeah she was a lovely girl she's very bubbly she blah 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 and then you get this the, now, the woman, was she someone who looked after her? Was she like her sort of... Um, you know, there was the, the, yeah, the woman in the car so. and... Yeah, or yeah, whether, she I, was the, whether she was just the prosecutor and had taken a real interest in no, the No, she, sure. no, she wasn't the prosecutor. No, she wasn't the prosecutor. I wasn't sure of her role. Okay. Um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll edit it in here. Anyway, she was talking about... Um, how um, Mercedes wasn't this sort of light character. She she uh, had a uh, quite a bad uh, crack habit. She yeah. uh, was a prostitute, and and there was all this. And then you hear from Josh. Uh, that this was the moment that got me. That Josh said, you know, he went to because they never had sex. He went to sort of grope her and found a penis. I said, you don't have any plans. She said, no. I said, well, you do now. Get in. She was like, well, what are we gonna do? I said, told her. I said, well, we're gonna go smoke some weed. And it's a Saturday, my dad's probably going to be grilling. So we go and we'll have some ribs and some baked beans and potato salad and all the good old southern meal and we'll have sex. And she said, okay. She said, you're lucky you're hot. She said, not everybody can I pull up and just get me in a vehicle with them. On the way over there, I guess she got nervous. She asked me, she was like, is this a setup? You know, I pull behind my dad's house. It was a nice sunny day. It was warm, nice blue sky. I was thinking, hey, I'm about to get lucky. It didn't work out that way. The body was face down in a prone position. And from the side and the top, I couldn't make any identification of who it was because all that flesh had decomposed. There was a lot of insect activity around the head. I noticed on that foot was uh, pink toenail polish. Uh, so I back up, I come up back to the head. From this angle, I can see the tank top shirt the victim was wearing and the lip of the shirt that's here was down the shoulder, and right here was an exposed bra strap. So me and Mercedes are back behind the house, and we're making out. And, you know, I reached down between her legs, and she has a penis. And I snap, and I jumped back, and I yelled, you know, what the hell was that? And... Mercedes freaked out and jumped out of the vehicle. Well, I jumped out of the vehicle and ran around my car. And I pulled out my pocket knife and I started stabbing Mercedes. He basically then stabbed her several, repeatedly. Yeah. Um, and it, in his mind, it was a crime of passion. Then she's still alive. And he hits her on the head, you know, he bludgeons her to death with a hammer. And it, yeah. just hearing him talk about it was shocking. Yeah. And then from there, it gets even more sort of complicated because friends of Mercedes, formerly Michael, um, talk about how he knew that, that, she, that he was a transgender. They had sex all the time. They, yeah. um, you know, he had gay porn on his computer. And the, the reason that he killed her, because he was in this gang, the Latin Kings, who forbade their members from partaking in homosexual activity and it was almost like a sort of 
self-hating thing that led him to this murder. Yeah. And that's the reason why he didn't want it to go to trial, because all this stuff would come out. But conversely, there were people saying if it went to trial, he may well have got off because of how people yes. in the South feel about homosexuality. I mean, what, was your, what was your the, feelings on this, Gary? Well, I, I really enjoyed the programme. Uh, mm. Obviously, what happened is just awful and tragic. Uh, mm. it, it, you cannot really get to the point of who you believe, because, of course, the, the, the other side of the story is passed away. You know, he's dead. So you will not know whether... Uh, Josh and Mercedes knew about, you know, Mercedes's uh, situation and whether that was something they were consenting to or whether it was because the evidence certainly points towards that Josh did know that, you know, he was dating a former man and a transgender and that he was into that and he was he was OK with that. But he knew that it conflicted with his his Latin gang background. Um, and, and knew that you know he, it was one of those things where almost it was it was kept secret. Although there was a a scene, wasn't there? Or they, they described a party that he brought her to, um, and somebody yeah. made a comment that she had broad shoulders. And maybe and that kind that of thing was the kind of thing that you know triggered in his mind, like I can't be caught out. You know, I, you know I'm going to get caught. Um, yeah. And he was a, he was eventually prosecuted for the first ever crime of, of, of hey, killing hey, a cry, yeah, yeah. Crime, it, well, yeah what happened what happened was that yeah he went to um he went to jail for obviously pleading guilty to murder yeah but then subsequently to the documentary being filmed he was then indicted for hate crime and yeah. found guilty and it was the first ever case of someone being found guilty of a hate crime against a, a person of transgender mm. which was i think a law obama brought in that you yeah. can now be found guilty of that and because you had like you saw all the police interviews and and the police chief you know really struggling to get his head round like the transgender and he said this is the first time that i've ever had to deal with this and mm. i think they they treated it as it was michael rather than mercedes you know the, and, and the, i think I, I definitely agree with man the point. Had been murdered I agree with the point that yeah, you made, and, and certainly you got a bit, a bit of insight. There was some wonderful kind of like uh, images inside the prison of his Latin kings, you know, intimidating. Mm. I couldn't quite tell whether that was done for effect or whether that was real. You know, the kind of like the the, 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 the gang signs and the kind of like you know treating of him in prison. Um, but the idea that had it have gone to trial and he had said, "Look, I was just dating a woman, and she turned out to be a man, and I lost my temper, and I admit it." And that probably would have been manslaughter rather than murder, or certainly mm. maybe a, a lawyer might have tried to argue yeah, they that. Argue is it a crime of passion? They kept yeah. describing it as like a heat of the moment type thing. Yeah. But and by I, the time I, they found the body, it decomposed, didn't it? Because he talks about how he called his dad and he wanted his dad to help him sort of cover it up yeah. and bury the body, and his dad instead sort of called the police on him. Overall, I think this was fascinating, and, and I mean, I think, uh, again, a real kind of shame that this only got a BBC Three viewing, and that I know it got a BBC mm. One airing, but it was quite late at night. 10.45, I, I think. Yeah, I, I'd really feel that the more people that would watch this, it, it really would, because mm. I think there's certainly links to the sort of the documentary style of making a murderer, of a yeah, murderer, and, and things like that, and I definitely feel that the quality is there. As you say, the way in which... At the beginning, you're a little bit bored. You're a little bit like, okay, somebody killed somebody. You're like, okay, and then all of a sudden, you get the scene with Josh in, you know, in confession about the fact that you know uh, that he was dating someone that he didn't know was a transgender. It opens up, and at that point, as you say, it totally turns, and mm. it, 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 it's almost like a total kind of like, okay, whoa, that's different. That's something I haven't heard before. So um, yeah, I, yeah, no, you, I, I literally high recommendation to back, check this out. Yeah. I literally sat back, I was just like, I went, oh, God, like, oh, wow. Like, you know, yeah. you're watching there, you're sitting, it's almost sort of like people going over, and then it's just like, what? Because yeah. he, was, he was talking Did about he her being that? so innocent, and what? Yeah. Sorry, Gary? Like yeah. to say, it's all, just, there was almost yeah. like a kind of like, what did he just say? Yeah, he was he kind of double Yeah, yeah. So then, no, no, really good. I'm looking forward to the. There's another two. Um, I think the second one is available on the iP- on the BBC Three iPlayer. Yeah. Uh, now it's called Murder in Mississippi. So another Mississippi and. Uh, I have a feeling they're all in case. Mississippi. I'm sure I read that at the beginning. Oh, okay. But, well, uh, they'll all be in Mississippi. Then. Well, I don't know. I don't know what the so, third one is yet. 
So, uh, but yes, high, high, high recommendation to check out, particularly if you're a fan of those kind of documentary style programs.